Hello and welcome to another video. Here I have the iMac G5 sitting behind me. Today's the start of the fun stuff. I went and picked up a new sync cable for my iPod Classic. Black, 80 gigabytes, covered in scratches of course. I like these connectors, guys. Let's get it connected up to the Mac. Oh, have I put that in the wrong way? Yes, I have. It's got a very, very dimly lit screen now saying charging, please wait. So I'll put that to the side for now. You guys might already be aware from a few previous videos, but I really like owning my own music in MP3 format that I can do whatever I want with. And I really like the idea of having a separate device to store all of my music as well. So for me, the iPod Classic is perfect. I've currently got it synced with my Windows desktop machine, but I thought since this is going to be my digital life iMac, as I keep saying, I'm going to start syncing the iPod Classic with that. So in the meantime, let's look at my second edition. I teased this in the last video, and by the title, you'll already know what it is. It's an eyesight camera, guys. I've always had my eye on one of these cameras, and for the first time, I have one in my possession. 640 by 480 pixel VGA resolution, so I think that's 480p. Full motion video at 30 frames per second. System requirements, this'll be good. Macintosh computer with a 600 megahertz or faster PowerPC G3, G4, or G5. And Mac OS 10.3, that's Panther or later. Don't know why it's in two parts, that's a bit weird, but let's open it up and see what we've got inside. There are the two compartments. <laughs> so here we have a few attachments, and I gather that it's actually quite rare to find a camera that has all these attachments these days. So I guess that's a stand if you want it on the desk. Maybe this one attaches to your screen somehow. Then obviously in the right side, we've got the camera itself. And what have we got here? That's USB to Firewire. Weird, never seen one of those before. We've also got the Firewire cable. That's just Firewire to Firewire. And then the camera itself, which is in a little plastic cylinder. If I take it out, you can see there's the lens. Oh, it opens and closes. That's a pretty nice feature. You got the Apple logo on the back there and this really nice aluminium, almost like the cheese grater Power Max and Mac Pro design there. While I was giving this cable a sanitize with some wipes because of Corona, iTunes came up, which means it's detected successfully my iPod Classic and it's trying to sync. Oh wow, that iTunes software takes me back, guys. My first experience with iTunes was when my family got an iPod Classic and we didn't have broadband internet at home, so I actually had to go in with my dad to his work to sync our iPod. All right, enough of that. Let's get the camera plugged in. Don't know how they want us to attach that there. Oh yeah, it's quite happy to just sit there, I guess. Maybe it's meant to go like that and just kind of hang off the edge of the screen. Okay, that looks like the cable's under quite a bit of stress there, but oh well. Okay, yeah, that's not gonna happen. I'm just gonna put this stand up here for now. All right, well, it's there. It's sitting there. It doesn't appear to be a very good angle though. The little green light has come on. Oh, it's launching a chat app, iChat. So I've just launched Photo Booth, and yes, this angle is not how it's meant to be, clearly. I'm gonna do a bit of googling and see if I can find a picture with someone with the correct attachment and see how they've done it <laughs> Oh guys, you're gonna love it. I figured it out in true Apple fashion, right? Here we go Here's this attachment and I thought nah There's no way it's gonna go like that because it'll just fall over if I stand it on top of the screen. Well watch this There we go. It's magnetic. How cool is that? It just attaches by itself in true magical Apple fashion That is so cool. And then you can of course adjust the angle depending on how you want it. And there we go. The quality is horrendous, <laughs> as you would expect. You can just see the M1 MacBook Pro lying on the bed there. Wow, check out that frame rate. It is hideous. And I've just looked up there to the menus and it seems that just doing this is using almost 100% of the CPU. Yeah, it's really not coping very well with this. The temperature's shooting up. Oh, this takes me back, guys. We have these weird light tunnel things. Considering the era that this came out in, it's actually quite impressive. How cool is that? I don't know what I'm gonna do with it yet. It's a wonderful collector's item, and they're becoming pretty rare these days. I'll probably shoot something with it. I don't know what yet. So we also have the iPod connected, so I'm actually just gonna go back into iTunes and wipe the thing. I do have a bunch of music on there, but I'm gonna start fresh and I'm gonna sync from here. Now, if you think I'm crazy for syncing an iPod to such an old device, well, I have a Time Machine backup drive here in this not so elegant USB enclosure, which fills me with confidence. Check out that old download interface. Any of you guys remember this? Okay, so I've loaded one album <laughs> into iTunes because all of my music is on my desktop computer which my partner's using at the moment so I'll transfer all that across later. You guys don't need to see that, it's not very interesting. But here's an album in there and I just love the way the classic iTunes looks. Some of you guys will probably remember this interface and I'll just quickly try and play a song here. <laughs> A 
As you can hear, the internal speakers don't really agree with my music taste. They're very, very weak. Yeah, doesn't sound great. But that's not the point. The point is to get it onto the iPod. So if I plug this guy in, it should come up in iTunes any second. And there we go, it's come up on the desktop, Quinn's iPod. I love that. I can now go in and select the music I want to sync. So sync music, and then I'll select sync entire library. You guys will probably remember this. Hit apply, and there we go. It's copying those four songs onto the iPod. I really like doing this with an era appropriate Mac. I don't know when this generation of iPod Classic came out, but it just feels that much cooler to do it with an iMac G5 from 2005 than it does with a modern Windows PC. It just feels right, you know? <laughs> Remember when you had to eject your iPod? And then it does this okay to disconnect screen. Then if I go into music, cover flow, there we go. It comes up. I'll get all of my music on there this way, but as I said, you guys don't want to see that. That's boring as. Once I've done all that, I'll back it up to this drive that I'm using for Time Machine so it's all nice and secure. It'll be on my Mac Mini server anyway, but just in case the SSD fails in this machine, we've got a nice hassle-free backup here. And to be honest, if that does happen, I can probably just take this drive out of the enclosure and put it in there anyway. But yes, very, very happy with this Mac at the moment. I'm still using the Mighty Mouse with it. The only thing I've yet to replace is this annoying Microsoft keyboard. It's not the worst keyboard in the world, but it's not very cohesive for the setup, is it? And having used the machine now for a few days after the repaste, I'm pretty happy with the temperatures. It's sitting at 53 degrees. I've been syncing my iPod using the iSight camera and it's not got too hot. This was just an update of what I've been doing with the thing. Let me know if you've got any other video ideas down below. Otherwise, I'll be testing a few games next time. I don't know if any of you guys saw the short I did on the Shrek DVD, but I'm definitely going to be testing Shrek 2 on this thing. <laughs> Alright, I'll catch you next time. See you later.